Awesome. Here on Primetime tonight, WrestleMania takes shape. We've also got an update on the injury to Seth Rollins and be the booker for Sunday's Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. All that and everything else in the world of wrestling right here, right now, on the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime. <laughs>
that is an alternate, no, a that, suitable that's alternate. That's what I'm here for. That, for the one a good idea a month. Just take note on February 9th, hey, you achieved it this hey, month, this but, year. Hey, but you know, if there's only three weeks, that's one out of three. That's 33%. That's, you know, I've been making a lot of money if I was in baseball. Finn Balor. Now, does the company run the risk of, we know they've been incredibly cautious in the past, do they run the risk of bringing either of them back too soon to preserve the integrity of WrestleMania? Well, it's with Triple H. Yeah, and which means? He's a ring general. I don't, and, and he's one of the safer guys to work with. And I think Triple H is so good. They could, I mean, he worked around Sting. Okay? Mm -hmm. That match could have been terrible. Yeah. But Triple H worked around with Taker. I mean, he has been around for a long time. He's one of the best in the ring of all time. And I think he can, he, he can do a great match with Seth Rollins. If Rollins is even at 80%, right. it'll still be passable. All right. Well, we, uh, of course, wish Seth Rollins the best in his injury recovery. A bad, bad situation for him to miss two WrestleManias in a row as a top star is not something anybody wants to well, be no, in. no, because it hurts your pocketbook also. Exactly. Huge, huge paydays missed. And performing on the grandest stage of them all is an opportunity that any wrestler would tell you that they do not want to miss, especially due to an injury. But David Hero, we talked about earlier that uh, it is a big anniversary here on the Pro Wrestling Report, and we are celebrating along with Fight, F-I-T-E, that's Fight TV. So I want all of you to do us a thing, a favor right now. Do something for us, do something for you right now. Stop. Just stop. Whatever you're doing, stop. Just stop, okay? That includes you. Stop. And go to the website that you see on your screen right now. That's fight.tv slash PWR. Download the Fight app to your mobile device, your mobile telephone, your uh, tablet, your Apple TV, your Roku player, any of those things. Download it for free. Doesn't cost you anything. And what normally might cost you something, the pay-per-view events featured on the Fight TV app are available at no charge. It's a free view all day long through this time tomorrow exclusively on the link that you saw earlier, fight.tv slash PWR, TNA pay-per-views, all of them that have happened in the last year, Ring of Honor pay-per-views, all of them that have happened in the last year, including Cody Rhodes' presentations on that uh, brand as well. What Culture Pro Wrestling, a lot of people have been talking about that. I believe it also is available on the Fight TV app. Yes, because I watched that show um, on the Fight TV app. All of that, including the normal free content, which includes the Pro Wrestling Report, available now, no charge, during the 24-hour uh, sale, if you will, a free sale of the programming on Fight Beautiful. TV. Who doesn't love Hell free? of a deal, right? Free and even after that, word. and even after that process, you still can keep the app on your mobile device free of charge and enjoy the regular programming of Fight TV. That's F I T E Fight. Coming up next on Prime Time, it's this week's Raw Report, SmackDown Report, Hot News, and Be the Booker for this Sunday's Elimination Chamber. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime. Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Hero. And David, you, you, you know, you were well-behaved in that last segment. You spoke articulately. You acted like you, you were here. You were engaged. What's different? What has happened? I was... Can't quite put your finger in it? No. No. But you told me to, to stop, so I listened. Did you collaborate? I was collaborating up here. Oh, that's never a good thing for anyone. Oh, it's Let's go right thing. into this week's WWE Raw report, ladies and gentlemen. Raw this past Monday night featured the debut match on WWE programming of Samoa Joe. We would find out at the beginning of the program when a corporate Samoa Joe would be announced to face Roman Reigns by Mick Foley and Stephanie McMahon in the main event of Raw. Before we get to the results of that matchup, David Hero, did you expect to, and what were your thoughts on the corporate version of Samoa Joe in a suit and tie? Samoa Joe is a badass. He is. And he has been dominating. He is the dominator. Um, I didn't think he'd be wrestling this quick. No. I thought it would be a slow build, introduce him to the fandom. Hi, I'm Samoa Joe. You know, but I mean, hey, I mean, with the injury to Seth Rollins, you got to do something. There was no more talking. There wasn't, and you know, it's... The Samoan submission machine against 
Roman Reigns, two Samoan on Samoan, you know, which I thought was very interesting. You didn't think so? I didn't notice there. You know, you better be careful or the Ninth District of the Federal uh, Appeals Court will be coming after you next. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm Neither just talking he, out loud. According to him. <laughs> See you in court. Um, oh, my God. I was surprised that they went that far that fast, and I liked the dissension between Stephanie McMahon and McFoley over the, um, I guess you can call it the call-up of Samoa Joe so quickly in McFoley's mind to WWE Raw. I did like what Joe said to Foley in such that you've supported me for so long, you've been an advocate for me so, for so long, so why did it take me 18 years to get here? I'm surprised they're saying that he's been around for 18 years before he got there. It felt there. longer than they should have said. You're absolutely right. It makes it seem like he's an old dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They did acknowledge championships all over the world and uh, I think gave him the cred that he needed to the audience who may not have known him. But is this an instance where it proves or doesn't prove that the NXT shine may not shine as brightly when called up to the main roster? Well, no, everyone, most, I would say the majority of the wrestling fans know who Samoa Joe is. Mm -hmm especially when he made his debut. I mean, people went nuts for it. But I mean, NXT is viewed by millions of people every week. I'm not sure it is because there's only 1.5 million subscribers to the network. Okay, so if there's a million and one people that watch it, that's millions. <laughs> no, that's a million. <laughs> Do you, did one. you learn rounding when you went to uh, your, your Catholic school growing up? No. They didn't teach that part? Rounders? You were always getting paddled. That's not my thing. Sister Abigail? No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was a good match, though, between the two, but Braun Strowman would interfere and cost Roman Reigns the matchup. So in his debut match on WWE Raw, Samoa Joe gets the victory. Roman Reigns has been the whipping boy. He's not winning. He is not. Does yeah, he need to? He beat Rusev. That's been it. Mm -hmm. In the last year, he has put over everybody. Yeah. But he's, he's the chosen one. And here's what's so funny. Everyone complains and boos about him, but who has he beat? Who's he ever beat? Well, take Rusev out of the picture and Triple H in the last year. It's been very uneventful. All right. Well, moving on here on talking about WWE Raw, Goldberg appeared on the show and he was to address the challenge of Brock Lesnar for the matchup at WrestleMania. Well, he would choose to do so while the sitting WWE Universal Champion and his friend, Chris Jericho were in the ring, which led to not one acceptance, but another challenge and an acceptance. He accepts the challenge of Lesnar at WrestleMania. That is the first announced WrestleMania matchup. Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg. It is happening in Orlando at the Citrus Bowl, whatever you want to call it nowadays. And also, though, on the road to WrestleMania in the fast lane, Kevin Owens will defend his Universal Championship against Goldberg here thought, in Milwaukee who, on March 5th. Who would have ever thought we'd see that match? Right? I don't think anybody could have predicted it. The betting odds in Las Vegas, as Mean Gene would say, mm -hmm. would have had uh, some how, how about fruitful Jericho? opportunities Jericho there. Jericho is not his best friend. Hmm? He really, Jericho well, is I not I mean, would you accept a friend. match with Goldberg? I wouldn't, let my I wouldn't let my best friend put me in a match like that. But Jericho did indeed basically put him in the match. He did, which is not right. But it was either him or Owens. You gotta look out for number one, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, Goldberg doesn't number want Jericho. Number two still a loser. Goldberg doesn't want Jericho. Is this as obvious as it seems for the matchup in Milwaukee at Fastlane, the last WWE event, a pay-per-view event likely to occur in the Bradley Center as we are getting a brand new state arena here in Milwaukee? No, it's not. It's not as obvious? No. Really? Yeah. You don't think it's crystal clear that Goldberg wins the Universal Championship, goes into WrestleMania, for the championship now, the stakes not higher between Goldberg and Lesnar. It's a possibility, absolutely. But not obvious. But not obvious because Lesnar could be in Milwaukee also and cost Goldberg oh, the match. No way out 2002, three? That's when Goldberg cost Lesnar the match uh -huh. with, Eddie, with uh, uh -huh. Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, yeah. Could be his receipt. That's all. I don't think the return policy covers that far. But my thing is this. You want heat for the match, and the belt doesn't bring any heat for the match. It brings more marketability to the match, though, because when Goldberg is appearing on whatever show he's going to appear on, to have that nice, shiny, pretty championship belt on his shoulder but will Gold, help. Goldberg and Lesnar don't need that. They don't prop. need it. I they absolutely agree with you. I they absolutely don't. agree with you. But if, so, if, if, if I am the creative team, I have it where 
Lesnar screws Goldberg, and then you make the match mean more and worth more, career versus career. Because all they do is get in each other's way. Hmm. If it's for the title, eh. keep the belt on Owens because now he's still elevated top guy. You take the belt off Owens, now he's upper mid card. He drops real fast. Extremely fast. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, also, we found out that upcoming this Monday night on Raw, Bailey will be getting another championship opportunity against Charlotte, who interfered in a matchup with Nia, Nia Jax. Uh, that one will be for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. Now, we know Charlotte is Mrs. Pay-Per-View, but will she be Mrs. Monday Night Raw Absolutely. next Monday night? I just don't see it. Because you hate Bailey. No, I don't. I just don't see I just don't see it. Did you not have a good 12th birthday party? You weren't at Showbiz Pizza? I mean, is there a bad memory no, of never, your 12? I, I, never, I never did those kind of things. Really? Yeah, no. You didn't go see uh, Samson playing the piano at Showbiz? Not the monkey Samson at the zoo? No. It was a monkey playing the piano. Though. Showbiz Pizza? Yeah, Showbiz Pizza before no. Chuck E. Cheese bought him out and took him over. No. Again, I wonder about your life in the 80s. You don't know Silverhawks, you didn't know Thundercats. Did you watch an episode? I, I saw something you tweeted me. You know that Silverhawks was a, uh, one of them was a spinoff of the other? What about Voltron? Did you watch Voltron? I've heard of it. <laughs> you would be the orange lion, I think. You realize in the 80s I was a teenager. And, I mean, given your mental state nowadays, I don't think that you were too far out of your childhood at that point. I've, I've gone backwards since then. What about Small Wonder? Do you ever watch that television show? Is that what the special needs kid? Oh, God, no. No? That's not gonna, we're not, uh, that is this week's WWE Raw Report. Like Obviously, I didn't watch it then. <laughs> Coming up next on Primetime, it's this week's SmackDown Report, Hot News, The Three Count, and Be The Booker for Elimination Chamber. The biggest party event of WrestleMania weekend is back. WWE Hall of Famer Kevin Nash presents Shenanigans Orlando. Join Nash and his friends for a huge VIP party Saturday, April 1st. Party with the biggest stars of wrestling at the pub at Point Orlando on International Drive to kick off WrestleMania weekend. Don't miss Shenanigans Orlando hosted by Kevin Nash. Tickets are available now and going fast at PWRshow.com. That's PWRshow.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report. Damian Nelson's in here alongside Corky for uh, this Corky. week's edition. Oh, I'm sorry, David Hero. Yeah. Uh, for this week's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime. Did you get the, you were playing around with the Fight TV app during the break. Did I you did. Uh, I notice loved you were, it. yes. You were, uh, you did a search for Cody Rhodes and was watching all of his Did you great see stuff the chair shot he gave that guy across his face? Yeah, why are you surprised? That is one of the. That's most how an endorsed talent swings a chair. Safe chair shot. Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah. Sure, sure it is. What are you going to do when you see Cody down at WrestleMania? I'll shake his hand and say hello. Again? Cody and I are cool. Then that's the unfortunate thing. <laughs> that truly is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Smackdown, ladies and gentlemen. Let's uh, talk about what happened this past Tuesday. And it was billed as the matchup you never thought you'd see on Smackdown Live. And for the first time in a long time on Smackdown Live, Randy Orton versus John Cena. I didn't think this match was actually going to happen, David Hero. Why? It felt like one of those bait and switch kind of situations because that's seemingly one of the main events at WrestleMania. So why give it away for free on SmackDown yet one week after the Royal Rumble? Well, the match did happen, and kudos to WWE for a brilliant finish of that matchup. Both men came out still as yes. strong as they were going yes. into it yes. due to the interference yes. Yes. by both Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper. What an ending to SmackDown. And Cena looked strong. Yes, he did. And he wasn't winning the match and ultimately. He wasn't involved in the shenanigans either. He was not. He let the Wyatts and Orton and Harper do all their own stuff. Mm -hmm. He was like the garnish in that match. At the end, yes. Him and Orton had a good, typical standard matchup you know leading what? up to it. You can say what you want about seeing Orton and Cena for a million times. It's never stale. They change it up. As Randy Orton said just last week, it's the match you don't think or you don't know that you want to see again. Cena. And Orton is like Savage and Hogan. Okay. You know? How? Well, Hogan was always the white bread baby face. And Orton would go Could back be Italian and, or would go back or... and forth between baby face and heel. Mm -hmm. Much like Savage. Mm -hmm. They're just both guys at the same time, the same place. They both came up at the same time. And uh, you know, they they run very similar careers. Cena has had a more successful run. 
you know, but that's because Randy got in trouble early on. We are uh, going to do Be the Booker later for Elimination Chamber, where we're going to talk about the matchup that is the Elimination Chamber and whether or not John Cena walks out of the chamber, the all-new Elimination Chamber. Uh, this How Sunday, still the champion. I don't know. They probably scaled it down so they got to hype it up. I don't know. Scaled it down? Maybe it's not plexiglass. Maybe it's tempered glass now. Ooh, that would be bad. Tempered would be just as safe and just as fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, continuing on SmackDown, though, Baron Corbin, your guy, David Hero, wins in a fatal four-way matchup, setting us up for Sunday's Elimination Chamber. His opponents, AJ Styles, The Miz, Dean Ambrose, rounding out the fatal four-way matchup. Corbin having He's yet another stud, strong week on SmackDown. He's been a stud. He has been. He was great in the Rumble. He was. He was great on SmackDown. He was. He is on his way to becoming a top point getter. A top point getter in, in the, the draft, draft that yeah. you're 500 points behind in with three events left. Yeah, I'll be fine. How so? Because I have... Win, lie, and cheat? If that works. Just don't get caught. Overall, what did you think of Smacky Wacky this past uh, Tuesday night on the WWE Network? Again, no complaints on SmackDown. The only complaint I got about SmackDown is, it is. I'm getting tired of Ziggler and you had a match with Apollo Crews. And Apollo mm-hmm. Crews. Well, you're going to see it again on Sunday. It's, it's a so handicap match. It's so kabuki-ish and weird. The Great Kabuki, I saw nowhere in that matchup. Why do you keep bringing him up? I just don't like it. The Great Kabuki? The, the, just the whole program. You don't like... You're, 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 you're exhausted of Ziggler, right? As most a- of us are. Absolutely. You're disappointed in Apollo Crews. Extremely. And Kalisto's Kalisto. And Kalisto doesn't do anything for me. Who does more for you, Kalisto or Bailey? Probably Bailey. <laughs> Who does more for you, Bailey or CM or uh, Finn Balor? Oh, probably Finn Balor. Who does more for you, Finn Balor or CM Punk? It's like we're at the eye doctor. Yeah. Better now. Better now. Let me see. Um, better A. Better B. Neither one. Neither. So you're tapping out on Finn Balor, CM Punk. Yeah. I just can't see a Finn Balor main eventing a there WrestleMania. Why not, David Hero? Because he's bigger than Rey Mysterio? Because he's bigger than about the same size as The Miz? Uh, both those guys had lightning WrestleManias, didn't they? I think The I, I Miz forgot. is more than 200 pounds. <clears throat> uh, that is this week's WWE SmackDown report. Coming up next on Primetime, it's this week's Event Center, Hot News, The Three Count, and Be the Booker for this Sunday's Elimination Chamber. The Soder family thought they'd take a road trip this summer. A little fun, a little sun. What could possibly go wrong? Even under the best driving conditions, semi-trucks can still be dangerous. The results of being in a wreck with 40 tons of steel and speed can be catastrophic. And it only gets worse when you don't have Gruber Lofses on your side. If you or a loved one has been injured by a semi-truck, call Gruber Lofses now. One call, that's all. Welcome to this week's Event Center. I'm Linda Kay. Goldberg makes his triumphant return to Milwaukee when WWE Fastlane comes here to the FEMA Mirrors Bradley Center on Sunday, March 5th. Tickets are available at Ticketmaster.com. The biggest party of WrestleMania, our shenanigans party hosted by Kevin Nash, comes to the pub at Point Orlando on April 1st. Tickets are available at CWRshow.com. And the Ring of Honor makes its return to Milwaukee on April 28th at Turner Hall. Tickets are available at tapstheater.org. And that's it for this week's Event Center. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. I did not. Have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky? Yes. I or did that not. woman, Linda Kay, that was in the event center just a moment ago? Neither. Okay. Still, that's Your definition of sexual relations is what? Because Clinton's was a little different. I'd like to see what our current president's definition is going to be when that all comes out. Our current president won't put himself in that spot. He's going to mistakenly tweet a DM one day. I don't think so. And uh, it's all going to be out there. Okay, here's the thing. If you're going to cheat, you should cheat up. Mm-hmm. Doesn't she have an expiration date? I saw something on her back, on her back no, one day. I, I think she's here legally now, so she doesn't have to go back for anything. <laughs> um, thank you, Linda, for the events that are just a moment ago. But it is now time to go to this week's hot news, ladies and gentlemen. And firstly, uh, WWE has announced that they, as of today, 
in 2016, the fiscal year 2016, have achieved their highest revenue year in the company's history, generating some $792 million in revenue. Turned a fourth quarter loss in 2015 over to a fourth quarter profit of $10 million last year as well. 1.5 million and growing network subscribers. And um, we have heard it said, and the proof is now in the pudding, that even with declining ratings, even with declining live event attendance, even with Roman Reigns, WWE is having its most successful revenue year ever, which means more successful than the Hulk Hogan era, more successful than the Rock Hogan era, uh, Rock Austin era, more successful than the Cena era as well. Now, in those times, they didn't control their own pay-per-view revenue like they do now right, with the network. Mm -hmm. But it's a very telling sign that their revenue and their profits are up so but substantially. at the same time, I think it's a disappointment for the company that they have not broken that two million subscriber market. Yeah, one million was the break-even. 1.5 was their aspirational goal when the network launched some three years ago, I believe it was. Has it been that long? I don't think it's been About that long. About two years? Two years. Um, and they're uh, not providing any guidance necessarily as to where they expect on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis, but they are anticipating continuing to grow that revenue uh, for the network. Yeah. Regardless, these numbers prove the bold move that was the launch of the network in the faces of the pay-per-view providers was the best move the company ever made. Oh, there's no doubt because they control all the money. They can have extra programs. It's all for sale, all for sale. Not my mother. Huh? Dr. Detroit. Oh. We've established you also haven't seen that movie. Again, I wonder what the hell you did in the 80s. Did you exist in the 80s? Were I, you, I did. Were you in a, in a cryogenic freeze? No, I watched Max Hedrum in the 80s. Sledgehammer? Max Hedrum. Same thing, isn't it? No. Wasn't Max Hedrum on Sledgehammer? He might have been. <clears throat> I watched Remote Control, I think that was on <laughs> show. Folks, it's been announced that the Rock and Roll Express will be the next inductees into the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2016, and that leads to only one question, at least in my standpoint, from my standpoint, who is inducting them? And I can only hope that it is the outspoken James E. Cornette. Why would it be James E. Cornette? Why wouldn't it be? Who else would it be? Cornette, Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express, feuded for, what, 20 oh, years? Forever, forever, ever. And Cornette worked very closely with both teams. I don't think there's a third that you can associate with the Rock and Roll Express as much as you can Jim Cornette. No, I agree, but I don't know if Cornette is welcome back in the company. Look, I love Jim Cornette. I think that his his outspokenness, I think his his his, his rebellion, if He's you will, fantastic. is amazing. However, I don't think there is a company that would welcome Jim no, Cornette back not. by his own admission. Yeah. But those uh, those bridges have been rebuilt in the past, David Hero, especially as I it mean, pertains to the Hall of Fame. I can see Ric Flair do it. <sighs> yeah. Because Flair had a run with Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, and Horseman feuded with the Rock and Roll Express. Who inducted Coco Beware? Do you remember? I think it was Jerry Lawler. We'll see what happens. I hope it's James E. Cornette. Cornette, live mic on the WWE Network. It could be gold. <laughs> it could be gold. Talking about it, no one, let, let's be clear here, nobody, not even a Ric Flair, can do as great as inducting this team as Jim Cornette could. Oh, I agree, because... Off the top of his head. Yeah, because Cornette was married to them for so long. Right. He knows that wasn't legal back then. Well, that was kind of hush-hush. Won't be anymore either for about a month. Uh, Emelina is finally going to make her debut next week on Raw. But will she, David Hero? Well, it depends if they get the Apple sponsorship or not. <clears throat> okay. So let's say they do. I think. How do you debut her? How do you make her impact? Have an impact. She has, she'll get involved with the Bailey match with Charlotte. Oh. Step right up, Emelina. Yeah, yeah. Huh, okay. Hey, when you've been promoting this girl for the last six months, she has to come out and do something special. You know what I mean? That she does. And we'll see what happens next Monday night on Raw, folks. As we talked about earlier Are here in this broadcast. Nope. As we talked about earlier here in this broadcast, uh, we want to make sure you get the opportunity to get a ton of wrestling content for no charge, free of charge right now. All you have to do is go to the site on your screen. That's fight.tv slash PWR. Fight TV, a uh, great platform where you can watch over 4,000 hours of wrestling programming. That's most a lot of, of hours. Free. It is. Most of it free. Some of it on a pay-per-view basis. All of it free for the next 12 hours or so by going to that link, Fight TV, fight.tv slash PWR, and checking it out. All you have to do, it's so simple, folks. Literally, use your mobile device, go to that website, fight.tv slash PWR. It takes you right to the App Store. Download it. Download it. You're 
signed up and ready to but go. What's at that awesome point. is you can watch it on, like if you have a Roku player or whatever, it yes, finds it. Absolutely, by doing nothing. Once you press play on your device, it simply asks you, what do you want to play it on? This phone or any of the devices it finds wirelessly connected near you. So it's pretty awesome. That's Fight TV, proud partner of the Pro Wrestling Report, and also the sponsor of our WrestleMania coverage. David, here we talked about this last week. I've been yes. in talks with SoCal Val. She is excited to join me as co host of the Pro Wrestling Report, broadcasting live, live for the first time ever from WrestleMania weekend. We're going to be at WrestleCon on Thursday night, Friday, and Saturday. <laughs> That's how <amazing. laughs> much. Thanks, you're that excited. Well, I'm going to be next to SoCal Val for several hours over the course of WrestleMania weekend. Yeah, how did you get that gig? I'm that guy. Yes, you are. From there, of course, we leap into the shenanigans party on Saturday night, right next door to WrestleCon, after NXT, after Ring of Honor. It is going to be, they say, off the hook, right? Or is it, it's dank? Is that what it is? That sounds like a term we should probably shouldn't say on t television. You can't say that on TV. That's four letters also. It's a four-letter word. It might be get us in trouble. Cal says it all the time with all of his buddies. Let's go to this week's three count, folks. And you know how this works. Three topics, one minute on each. Where are we David, on I'm going to throw the first one to you right away so I can grab a drink of water. Oh. Sam Roberts is going to be hosting the pre-show along with Booker T and Renee Young, I believe, or the new girl, I can't remember her name, on Sunday at Elimination Chamber. Sam Roberts, of course, of uh, Sirius XM yeah, fame, and you big wrestling fan, and a big mainstream celebrity and in WWE's mind. that's exactly why they're doing it, because they know that he will promote it on his shows, on his Sirius XM radio show, uh, to promote Elimination Chamber and Fastlane and WrestleMania and everything going forward. And he is pretty knowledgeable in the wrestling business, and he's been groomed for that for the last couple of years. You know, he always gets the top stars, mm -hmm. the big names on his show, and um, I think it's an interesting marriage between Derby and Sam Roberts. Next topic is uh, apparent news that uh, TNA has welcomed back with open arms one Scott Demore uh, to the creative team in the company. If you don't remember Scott Demore, part of the what was the Canadian whatever it was the Canadian something he had a, yeah, his, his, his faction. Yeah. Uh, which included Petey Williams, who at the time was my favorite wrestler in the world. Um, and uh, what do you think of this news of him possibly well, being back? he's also in charge of international business, too. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that brokered the deal with, with uh, mm -hmm. Noah Wrestling. They're now partnered, yes. And um, you know what? In Japan. It's, it's, Scott's been around for a long time. He's a smart dude. Yeah. And Jeff Jarrett is bringing his... J.E. Double who? He's bringing his, his old guard back in with him. He already brought in Dutch... Um, Who's the sales guy? Don West is back. Don, Don West, West deals, ladies Don and gentlemen. Don West is back, and now Scott Demore. It's only a matter of time before the rest of the Jeff Jarrett clique is involved in TNA. Next up, David Hero, and I hope you got a chance to check it out. We didn't talk about this in pre -tape, I have but not seen it yet. The XFL documentary on ESPN earlier this week on 30 for 30. It was a look back at what was the XFL featuring uh, everybody just about who was involved, including a clean-shaven Jesse Ventura, ladies and gentlemen. Right. A fantastic documentary, in my opinion. And quite frankly, I did not realize how great, yet how horrible, the XFL was, which has now become a laughing stock of football, if you will. But at the time, 55 million people watched that first game, yes, which did. was horrible. And then the second game was, was actually a great game, but... The power went out because they ran out of gas in the gem generators. Just a fascinating look into the league and brought back a lot of memories of what was the XFL and the braveness of a Vince McMahon to take oh, chances. Oh, it's bravado. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's called brave. It was bravado. It was they wanted, at the time, they were making money hand over fist with oh, all yeah. the 316 shirts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they could afford to roll the dice because wrestling was never more popular than it was. Right. And the brand was hot and XFL. It was a good idea. And let's, let's be honest, the NFL stole a lot of ideas from the XFL. Yeah, absolutely. And that they was covered really in that documentary mm -hmm. as well. Well done and good job by ESPN of covering it. I always love, again, we talked about this recently, the non-WWE skewed retrospective pieces on things that they've done. Because if WWE would have produced it, you wouldn't have heard nearly as much of the bad as you did in this independent ESPN documentary um, as... Uh, was aired on the network earlier. It is available on demand if you have available uh, the access to the programming on demand from ESPN. With that, David Hero, it is now time. That was the three count. Good job. Good job on two of the three. So two out of three falls, you would have still won. Um, exactly. Let's talk about DWHS. What is it that is on your mind 
this week. Well, what I don't think the wrestling fans have noticed is that with WrestleMania season now coming, the WWE is slowly elevating their oh, mid card guys. Guys like WrestleMania. Luke Harper, who he's ended been, SmackDown. Only man standing in the ring. He's ending been, SmackDown. He's, 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 been put, he's been put in a program with Orton and Wyatt, got the John Cena rub teaming with him last week. Baron Corbin defeating AJ Styles. And then Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe both dominating Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. Four guys now being elevated. And then here's the interesting thing. What's the interesting thing, David? It's four guys that aren't flippy guys. It's Elbows. Big, it's big dudes. I think the experiment with the smaller, more athletic wrestler might be coming to an end because of the injuries with, to the Finn Balors, to the Nevilles, to the Seth Rollinses. Vince is going to go back to the old way of having monsters. And with Baron Corbin, Luke Harper, and Braun Strowman, and Samoa Joe it could be considered a monster. I think it's interesting that these guys are now all being elevated. So you know what that means. What does it mean, David Hero? The land of the giants is coming back to the WWE. And with that, David Hero has spoken. You feel good about that? I do. Did you enjoy that? I did. Did you think it was good? It's true. Is that what makes it funny? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that DWHS. We're going to take our final time out of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, it's our main event. It is Be the Booker for tomorrow's Elimination Chamber, the all-new Elimination Chamber. Coming up next on Primetime, it's Be the Booker for this Sunday's Elimination Chamber pay-per-view brought to you by Fight TV, where all content is free right now. The biggest party event of WrestleMania weekend is back. WWE Hall of Famer Kevin Nash presents Shenanigans Orlando. Join Nash and his friends for a huge VIP party Saturday, April 1st. Party with the biggest stars of wrestling at the pub at Point Orlando on International Drive to kick off WrestleMania weekend. Don't miss Shenanigans Orlando hosted by Kevin Nash. Tickets are available now and going fast at PWRshow.com. That's PWRshow.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. It is time for Be the Booker. Damian Nelson here alongside David Hero. Yes. And in this segment, David, what we do is we take this here whiteboard here at Casablanca and we talk about the Elimination Chamber, yes. which is this Sunday on WWE Network. And a lot will be happening on the show, so let's get right down to it. And fantasy book it. Book it the way you would if you were the man in charge, God forbid, David Hero. The first match we're going to talk about is one of our favorites together. Naomi, Naomi going up against Alexa Bliss. And Naomi making her big return back to SmackDown, right back into the hunt for the women's championship on the SmackDown brand. And she has Alexa Bliss, who has her good, close personal friend, Mickey James, with her. Yes. Alexa Bliss and Naomi, the fans have been wanting Naomi to become the women's champ for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Alyssa Bliss is the Alexa champion. Alexa Bliss, yes, Alexa. she is. Did I say Alyssa? You said Alyssa. You're close. That's Milano. like that thing you talked to from... Um, from um, yes. From um, Google. Amazon. Amazon, yes. Mm -hmm. Alexa. Bliss. Yeah, and then the gimmick spins around. But I mean. Some good YouTube videos to search of Alexa misunderstanding. Oh, children. really? Yes. Oh, we'll have to check that out. Um, <laughs> You're in one, actually. Oh, I'm in a now lot of say them. this. Yeah, go ahead. I do that. <laughs> but Alexa Bliss, they've been putting a lot of time and effort into her. I think she is the one to keep the title. I ex fully expect to see Alexa Bliss retain. The SmackDown Women's Championship. So Naomi's life doesn't matter. It does, but not at the chamber. Folks, Luke Harper will be going up against his former family member, his former brother, and I guess you can say that in Randy Orton. Randy Orton, of course, has that chance at the championship at yes, WrestleMania yes, after winning yes. the Royal Rumble yes, matchup. Luke Harper standing strong to end SmackDown earlier this week. What happens when he faces Randy Orton on Sunday I at the think Elimination it's Chamber? It's pretty obvious what's going to happen. Luke Harper is going to leave the chamber defeating Randy Orton. What? Absolutely. Really? You got to keep elevating Luke Harper. He has to mean more. Randy Orton already has the guaranteed main event at WrestleMania. Him losing to Harper is not going to hurt his stock at all. Wow. You just blew my mind. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that happens on occasion. Speaking of which, Nikki Bella will be taking on Natalia. How did you like their face off, their interview, where Nikki walked up and walked out after yeah. Natalia said John Cena's going to leave her yeah. <laughs> after she uh, loses? You know what it is? 
people complain about Cena Orton, this year has been going on just as long. Yeah. They haven't had many matches, though. But they've always been connected somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to believe Nikki's going to get her heat back. Doesn't she have to? She has to. She really does. She has to beat Natalia, and then they move on to the next program. We're going to asterisk Nikki Bella. Because I want to ask you about something that is happening in your head. Reference her later on after we talk about the chamber matchup. Okay. All right. So next matchup will be tag team turmoil. Every tag team that's not on Raw will be in this matchup yes. going against, going after the championships held by American Alpha right yes. now. Yes. It's going to come down to two teams. Uh, it's usually. American Alpha and the Usos. Ooh. So. Usos have been fantastic. They have been great. American, it's the shoes, isn't it? America, yes, American Alpha has been amazing. Um, Slater and Rhino, I don't see that happening. The Ascension gets a win on SmackDown. All these teams are now vying for a better spot. But if it's up to me, American Alpha has been fantastic. And I want to see the American Alpha keep going all the way to WrestleMania. All right, so the Alpha gets the win. Yes. We'll just overlay that. Sorry, I wrote it over, so it's over. Yeah, I hear you. I got you. Um, next up, there are three women's champ or women's matchups on this card. Of course, I think one of them may happen on the pre-show matchup or pre-show event. And I think it'll be this one. However, that is Becky Lynch versus Mickey, Mickey James. James, the Lynch kicker. You know what? And and Mickey James has been she's been brought back to help elevate to help get these younger. We can't call them divas, but how about wrestlers who happen to be superstars? Women? To, to get them ready for WrestleMania. And uh, I fully expect Becky Lynch to come out on top on Mickey James. Uh, it's a handicap match, ladies and gentlemen, as Kalisto will team up with Apollo Crews to take on the endorsed Dolph Ziggler. Yes, you must book this. If you want me to, I'll just pick the endorsed. Whew. There's no way those two guys should lose a handicap match to him. To him. To him. They all got to get their heat back. He's been knocking guys out with chairs and super kicks the last few weeks. So these two guys beat him. It means nothing because the two guys beat him. Okay. You don't like it? I think Ziggler can be real strong coming out of it if he pulls out a win. And then you bury these two guys that you're trying to elevate. What do they mean right now? Nothing. So you got to elevate them. You know, you just like giving, you like to bury guys. Do I? Yes. You like to get your shovel out, and if they're not endorsed, then you bury them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I sure do. Yeah. Is it because that, you know, these guys aren't a part of Trump's America? Well, they won't be let back in. Well, Cruz might. <laughs> it is an elimination chamber matchup, ladies and gentlemen. John Cena, who is so, defending, what is so it's what you don't say, that you know you didn't say, but that you did say, that is so funny. It's the Elimination Chamber matchup itself, ladies and gentlemen. John Cena defending his WWE Championship against AJ Styles, the former champion, the man he took it from at the Royal Rumble, The Miz, who's also endorsed, Dean Ambrose, Baron Corbin, and B- Bray Wyatt. John Cena, he's got uh, quite the task here. Elimination Chamber, as you know, six pods, every two minutes a pod opens. They're saying this is the all-new Elimination Chamber, but it doesn't seem like the all-newness of it will not will impact the rules of the match. What happens here, David Hero, at least at the very end? What do we end up with in this Chamber well, match? Well, let's be honest, there's lots of speculation that Bray Wyatt's going to win. So it could be Orton and Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. Why? They're still part of the Wyatt family. But it's great because that elevates Bray Wyatt to upper card where he should be. Mm -hmm. John Cena does not need the championship to go to WrestleMania. He needed it a 16th time. But he'll get it a 17th time. He'll break the record. There's no doubt about that. Um, Everybody said that about Triple H, by the way, when he got to 14. And that's not, well, But he's been a part-time guy. You know? Um, You know, I can see just about everyone leave with the belt except for the Miz and Ambrose. Why? I just don't see it. I can see Corbin AJ shocking Styles the world. AJ Styles is smaller than those two. But AJ Styles is a way better wrestler. And he's already had the belt. Miz, hotter than he's ever been. Agreed. Ambrose, former champion. Yep. Styles, former champion. Miz, former champion. Corbin Wyatt, new to the scene. Yes. Wyatt hasn't had that chance because of various reasons. Corbin, I, rising real fast. I honestly believe Bray Wyatt 
They have to. It's a shocker, isn't it? It is. No one's expecting he's that. He's been so stale lately. Mm -hmm. he, nothing's been going on with him. He had a great showing in the Rumble. Orton versus Wyatt. That can finally come to a head. At WrestleMania? Absolutely. Because you said it's a waste overall to have Orton and Cena in the same match when you could have them work with two other people and elevate everybody and, elevate everybody yes. and the whole card. You need to make wrestling look like every match can be a main event. Mm -hmm. So whatever match Cena's in is going to be a top match. Now you have Wyatt and Orton is for the SmackDown title. Yeah. Okay. And that story, the story's there. Yeah. Keep the belt on Owens. Yeah. Now he's in a top match. Mm -hmm. Goldberg and Lesnar's already a top. You already have four or five solid top matches. There's a rumor. You talk about these rumored matchups, and we tend not to delve into rumor here, but this one's so hopefully wrong that I want to talk about it. At WrestleMania, if John Cena does lose, like you say he will Saturday at the Elimination, Sunday at the Elimination Chamber, he's left open for Mania. Yes. He is married or engaged to or seeing Dating. Nikki Bella. Yeah. And The Miz has Maurice, and there's a rumored match uh, between Cena those and Nikki four and Miz and Maurice. at Mania. So take me through April in. Orlando, and then August in Brooklyn. Well, if history does repeat itself. And it usually does, folks. Remember when the Macho Man. Oh, yeah. And Miss Elizabeth reconnected at WrestleMania. Seven. Yes. Los Angeles. Yes. And then they got married at SummerSlam. That was a match made in hell. And heaven. Hmm. Yeah. Remember? Oh, I remember. And I wouldn't be surprised if Cena and Nikki get engaged at WrestleMania. I'll tell you what, Which folks. would be a huge sports center moment. Yeah. And then they can headline the pay-per-view with their wedding. Didn't like it then, don't like it now. Because it was a legit wedding, right? At No, they were already SummerSlam? married before then. But I mean, no shenanigans happened. Nobody came in, did a running or, or did yeah, that. Yeah, I remember when Jake brought the snake out and- During the wedding ceremony? Macho Man's arm. That was then? I think so, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was. Huh. All right. So, be the booker. Elimination Chamber. The way this guy would make it happen. Alexa Bliss retains her championship. Yes. Luke Herbert defeats Randy Orton in a shocker. Yes. Nikki Bella defeats Natalia. The American Alpha wins the tag team turmoil. Becky Lynch over Mickey James. Apollo Crews and Kalisto win in their handicap match over Dolph Ziggler. And in the Elimination Chamber match, ladies and gentlemen, John Cena loses. John Cena loses. John Cena loses his WWE championship. Bray Wyatt walks out the new champion and into WrestleMania against Randy Orton in another main event matchup. Yes. Interesting. Well, that is that, folks. And that is also this week's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. I want to remind you that we are unfortunately not going to be on air next week. We'll be back in two weeks here with brand new editions of Prime Time and Feedback Friday. But Feedback Friday does indeed come to you tomorrow right here on Fight, F-I-T-E, Fight TV. And then, as I said, back in two weeks That's for more for you. of the PWR programming. Thank you very much. Can't read it, so it doesn't help. For that one, this is Damian Nelson saying thank you so much you for tuning in. We'll see you again uh, tomorrow on Feedback Friday.